Hi, welcome to the seven set video series on critical building and pest issues that purchasers should be aware of when relating to um, purchasing residential properties. My name's Ryan Craig, I'm the uh, owner and consultant for QC's Building Services. Uh, we've been licensed uh, in both building and pest for around 20 years now uh, and have carried out inspections on residential properties in the Brisbane and greater Brisbane area for that time. And that's what's led me to make this seven set video series is because over the time of doing those inspections, it's become almost scarily abundant uh, and obvious to me that it's very few uh, purchasers that we deal with on a daily basis who are in, under contract buying a property that are aware of any of the information that I'm about to or have provided in this seven set series, despite the fact it's critical. And invariably that places them in a situation where they're under duress, stress, that can cost them financially. So it motivated me to say, right, we need to get more education out to the public so that they can be aware of these things because they are so important based on what I've seen. And um, for that reason, yeah, that's how the videos have come about. So the eight, sorry, the seven videos are, number one is the incorrect manner in which properties are marketed to people for sale. Uh, and quite astoundingly, over 50% of the properties we inspect turn out to be not correct in, in the manner in which they're marketed. So four bedroom, two bathroom on the realestate.com or domain. When that's tested and a search is done with the local council authority, over 50% of the time our clients are told, A, it's never ever had a building approval, which is more of the rarer uh, occasion, which is a legal requirement to have so. Um, or secondly, that it's had a building approval, um, but it has not had a final inspection certificate for that work, which again is a legally required thing to do under Queensland state law. And therefore, the construction work remains incomplete or informal. So the marketing is obviously portraying four bed, two bath, but on council records, it's a block of land because it's not complete. So big difference. So we'll cover that number one. Number two, which is the video today, will be all about the different service levels of building and pest providers um, and there's two significant factors um, the mountain type of information you get and the type of report and we'll cover that a bit later number three will be issues related to a more commonly um, carried out practice in modern times which is where vendors provide reports to prospective purchasers and I'll cover some issues of that with number three video four will be issues building and pest issues in relation to contract and um, searches that should be done uh, five will be the allocation of time that you achieve for your building and pest clause on the contract. There'll be some critical information in that video about that issue. Six will be information about verbal advice, which is extremely common to be proffered to you from vendors or marketing agents. Um, the reality is when that's tested as well, can often be a far distance away from what the truth is. So I'm gonna cover some issues about verbal advice and how to handle that and what you should do in relation to uh, protecting yourself from these complications with verbal advice. And the last one is another very important one, which is that you should make a formal request of any vendor that you're looking at purchasing a property of to disclose any known issues to you. Now, there's no legal requirement for them to do that. And invariably, there's the opposite uh, intentions or efforts are made by the vendor. And that is there's a concealed effort, a concerted effort to actively conceal known issues or defects because when we find them, it's, um, disclosed to us that the vendor knew about it but hasn't told anyone about it. So the only way you're gonna get better protection from this is by making formal requests of vendors about some key issue, um, topics and we'll cover that in the last video. But this one today is about service levels for building and pest providers within the industry. And there's some information in here that you really need to be aware of before you make your choice as to who you use to carry out your inspection, both property, building or timber pest. So we'll start on the service and the amount of and quality of information you get. There's an Australian standard for residential building inspections in relation to the property side of it, which is incredibly basic, minimalistic and vague in its nature. Sadly, uh, the greater majority of inspection companies will adhere to that standard only. And when you actually look at what the standard asks someone to do and comment on, and also consider what it excludes. If you engage someone that only adheres to the Australian standard and gives you that information only as your inspection company, you're going to be in a situation where you're increasing your risks of suffering financial loss or some sort of problem because of the lack of information within that report. What I mean is some examples of exclusions from 
an inspection company that just adheres to the Australian standard. There'll be no obligation for them to comment on any electrical matters, despite the fact they might be very knowledgeable in that area. There'll be no obligation on them to talk about any, um, most plumbing issues, sorry, um, again, despite the fact they might could be very knowledgeable and could assist you by doing so. There'll be no obligation for them to comment about any swimming pool issues, building certification issues, or simply walk into a property and make the effort to try and grab an air conditioning remote to try and turn it if it's see if it goes on because that's all of those things are just examples as well specifically excluded from the Australian standard uh, and there's no requirement for someone to do that and most companies for that reason don't do that which is really not but well, it's not really it's, it's it's just not good enough and you really need somebody an inspection company who's prepared to give you I put it this way, like all the information they can impart to you, completely irrelevant as to whether or not it's contained in the Australian standard or whether or not they're licensed. If they have knowledge in that area, an inspector and inspector, inspection company, and this is our attitude and what we do, we will impart that information because it can help the client make the most informed decision. Of course, where we're not licensed electrical or plumbing, uh, we have to disclaim the information we give and recommend that you go and seek um, opinions from licensed electricians and plumbers. But we can impart and do have good knowledge in those areas and should be willing to pass that on and are, in our case, because we know it can help people. Just with the air conditioning, on many occasions, um, we can walk into a property and grab a remote and it won't start, it won't work. Now, straight away, that could be $1,500 to $2,000 for a brand new system. Now, if a company you engage doesn't do that because they don't have to under the standard, you're not gonna know about that and you're gonna find out about it after you move in, and you think about how easy it is for somebody else to just take the time to find a remote and try it, that's the sort of service level you wanna make sure you engage from your inspection company. So, really, really, really important to make sure you ask before you engage any inspection company, are you going to exceed or adhere to the Australian standard? And if they say only adhere to, walk the other way in my opinion because otherwise you'll get very basic levels of information. Um, one other thing that's very common is uh, and you need to be aware of is exercise caution on agents or any building and pest company the agent will proffer to you. The reason I say that is because the agents will not want anybody who provides a good quality comprehensive level of service to prospective purchases because that can create complications because it educates the purchaser more and they might find something out that they may not have if a company used if they've used a company that only give the minimum information so the agents will invariably try and pass cards out because they really want to um, have purchases use somebody that they're comfortable with that they know is only going to give the basic amount of information and that will be facilitating an easier ride to get the commission and the sale done at the end of the day now, it's not all the time, I've got to be fair, there could be some agents out there that, um, I haven't seen it yet, but there could be some agents out there that actually pass out cards for companies that are very thorough and detailed and do give a good quality service. But make sure you're aware of what I'm saying and test that by asking any um, company that is given to you by the agent or card about their standards of service levels. But you've got to exercise caution about any referrals from agents on building and pest companies because it's predominantly almost always a company that'll give the minimum information. Okay, um, so the other thing um, is about the uh, report of service levels for an inspection company to you that is just as important also as the manner in which things they find it's commented on. So reporting I mean by that. So there's two styles really. Um, the predominant one again is unfortunately the less standard or lesser of the two and they normally go hand in hand with a company that adheres to the Australian standards only they'll normally use the kind of report I'm about to mention now, which is a tick and flick or ticks and crosses and boxes. Very generic, templated and basic. And not good enough for anybody that wants to get the right kind of information to ensure that they can make an informed decision about the property in relation to the building and pest that um, they're doing their due diligence on. What you need, um, and again, this is something that we always provide our clients, is a report that is very comprehensive in its nature, extremely detailed and thorough, and what it'll do is um, provide the right information for clients to make the right decision for them. Um, how do you do that? You, not only, so you not only identify a defect, 
you try and give clients what you believe to be probable causes, rectifications and suggestions and that's the manner in which you should get a defect or an issue explained to you rather than just a tick in a box and then moving on. Also you should try and make sure are they going to provide digital photography of defects. Another tool we use which we find very beneficial is video, de video of defects for clients who may not be on site or if it helps demonstrate a defect better and that can be accessible in the report via a hyperlink. Um, and as I said, explanation of uh, the defects being found. So um, to summarize, make sure when you're engaging a building and pest inspection company that for both aspects, they're not just going to give you the minimum amount of information contained in the Australian standards, but they're going to exceed that. And furthermore, ask them to justify that by what they will talk about and what, what areas are they gonna talk about over and above the exclusions listed in the Australian standard. Um, so make sure you do that. Uh, secondly, what kind of report am I going to get? Am I going to get one that's going to give me very little information that's gonna be generic tick and flick? Or am I gonna get someone that's gonna go a little bit further um, and talk about issues in a manner which tries to give me probable causes, possible rectifications and suggestions about the matter. And that's really what you need to have to make the best possible decision on the property. Uh, so I hope this video has been uh, informative for you. And um, it's uh, also there is another six videos in this series which I really strongly suggest you take the time to look at. All of the issues within the series are as important as the other and could potentially be very um, beneficial for you and save you potential uh, costs uh, and also emotional distress if um, you have more knowledge of these when you're going through buying a residential purchase property than not. Please share the information also with any of your friends because most people don't know about these kinds of things and it's such a big decision when you buy a property you think about the money that's involved there's got to be a better knowledge base out there and I know after 20 years there's not so please share it to everybody that you know that might be buying property so that they can also be aware of this and be more in control of the situation when they're buying and move out of the vendor agent controlled um, environment which it is now and a lot of that can be based on uh, misleading untruths as well which I'll cover in the videos and, and um, substantiate as well in the videos. Uh, so if you are at any stage in the future buying a property, uh, we'd love to help you out. We wish you all the best with um, your house hunting. And as I say, at some stage in the future, if you need us, we're here for you. Thank you very much.